Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today we start the new topic and the new topic is chapter number 5 of the book and that is what? That is tariff. Right? Yes. So what is tariff? And, and the spelling I always make a mistake in this city. It is a T-A-R-I-F-F. Okay, so this is the topic of today, tariff. Now, I don't know why I don't remove this sticker from the board. Anyways, let it be. So, tariff is what? So, in the previous video, we've seen the cost of electrical energy. So, you could say that that was the cost of the production or the generation of electrical energy. Now, when you are selling it to the consumer, so you have to do what? You have to uh, basically charge them for that. Yes. And that charge, so, so it's not like that that you randomly do it, right? So the charging would be through a certain set of rules, through a proper agreement, right? Through, through, through a license, you could say, an agreement, right? A certain set of rules. So that set of rules, those set of rules under which you charge a consumer is called tariff, yes? Yes. So I will write it down the, that the, the set of rules the set of rules under which you charge a consumer is called tariff. Now the tariff should not be harsh. It, the, you should offer electricity, you should uh, have a reasonable rate so that the consumer uses it. He do not switch to any other uh, what any other alternative uh, that may be maybe gas operated systems in today's world it is the 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 what the solar panels their own solar system at their house why because it is uh, comparatively cheaper yes yes so because the the, the electricity rates have gone so high so you the tariff should be such that you offer your electricity at what at a at a what at a reasonable rate so we get into the details of it we will also study the types of it in this video let's see what we have got so basically what happens is what happens is that that somebody produces it the electricity is produced over here let's say by a by an IPP so this IPP is what this is an independent power producer right so this IPP independent power producer is the producer of electricity now now what happens is that they sell it to the wholesalers like for instance if I talk about our country is NTDC National Transmission and Dispatch Company so these you could say are the wholesalers of electrical energy right yes then what happens is they sell it NTDC further sells it to consumer utilities like PESCO, TESCO, ISCO etc so for instance our shower electric supply company PESCO etc these are what these are the consumer utilities and 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 finally this consumer utility sends it to the to the final consumer so this is what the the cycle is the final consumer is the end user of the electrical energy okay the consumers can be pref persuaded to use electrical energy if it is offered at suitable rates. So the rate at which electrical energy is supplied to consumer is known as tariff. Although tariff should include the total cost of producing and supplying electrical energy plus some profit, yet it cannot be the same for all consumers. So why it should not be the same for all consumers? Uh, you know, so it depends on the load factor and the maximum demand, you could say. So we'll study it in the type, so then it will get clear over there. Right? Yes. Uh, okay. So objectives of tariff. So objective is, what should be the main concern when you are doing what? When you are basically uh, drawing these certain set of rules. When you are making these certain set of rules, so the, op the this should be, you should have to recover the cost of the production of electricity, right? Yes. 
so number first would be what to recover the cost of production of what of this electricity yes of course the second would be the capital investment the cost of production so the capital investment of course this comes under this operation and maintenance this also comes in this uh, wait we'll study it in the desirable characteristics or so the objectives are of course the same the cost of production of electricity yes the the recovery of the cost of production the recovery of the capital the capital investment similarly uh, the the the, reco the the cost of what the operation and maintenance so this is what you have to keep in your mind and the final one is a reasonable profit so these are the certain uh, objectives of this tariff now this is a theoretical topic and i don't like theoretical topics you can study it by yourself even so maybe i am sounding a little boring today because i don't like these sort of topics the basic thing is clear tariff is what is the certain set of rules maybe we get into the types of it so i start liking it right otherwise i am you know uh, good with the numerical problems with the making a video not with my own practice so the objectives are this now the next is you have the desirable characteristics of tariff so what should be the desirable characteristics of tariff characteristics of tariff so the first one is what that it should have a proper return proper return means what that the the the, the money that you are spending you should be able to get it back the proper return from each consumer the total receipts from the consumer must equal the cost of producing yes and plus a reasonable amount of profit yes the next should be uh, it should be fair and what is the fairness so for instance the book has given an example that a, a, a higher user, um, uh, you know a, a user that is using more electricity so a bigger consumer of electricity should be charged at a lesser rate and why is that so you've seen in the cost of electricity videos that the fixed cost that the cost you divide by the number of electrical energy units consumed yes yes so which means that if the energy units consumed are high this means the cost per unit would be less so if a, if a consumer is using higher number of units so you do what you are dividing it by a higher number of units so you are getting less cost so charge him less also okay yes similarly whose load factor is high whose load factor is high so you also have to charge him through a lower one okay the next should be the simplicity simplicity means what that this should be simple enough that us uh, uh, an ordinary an ordinary consumer of electricity understands it quite well yes the next one is uh, that it should be what is this reasonable profit of course of course you you should have a profit in mind the book has mentioned an eight percent not possible in our country go for a higher profit yes the more the profit the more it's good it is a very small value it is a very small value that the book has mentioned so the profit would include what on the you've got your production you, you've got your transmission you've got your distribution the whole thing come under it and then you should also have a reasonable profit on that yes yes and the next one is that the final one that the book has mentioned that it should be attractive and what does attractive mean is that uh, it should be reasonable enough that the consumers pay easily they are encouraged attractive means what that they should be encouraged to use electrical energy in 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 in, sp in spite of getting to any other form of energy so these were some boring things anyways we get to the types we get to the types of tariff so the first one the first and the simple most one is the simple tariff is what it's simple tariff or uniform rate tariff this is also called simple tariff or uniform rate tariff now uh, what is this 
so in this what happens is that the tariff that you are charged on the number of electrical energy units consumed yes that is only thing you are charged on what you are charged on the electrical energy units consumed in kilowatt hours if 10 units you've got a certain rate for that for instance 10 rupees per unit so you have used 10 units your final bill would be the monthly bill would be for instance 10 multiplied 10 is 100 rupees simple you've, you've used 100 units still your rate is 10 so 10 multiply 100 would be 1000 rupees you've used one unit the same price for each and everybody depending on what depending on the number of electrical energy units consumed the simplest of all independent of the load variations independent of the type of consumer independent of the load demand the load factor load conditions whatever may be the case the case is energy units consumed multiplied by the rate number one disadvantage so you have a disadvantage to this is that you don't have a discrimination between different types of consumers someone is using a higher load someone is using a lesser load somebody is operating at a good power factor somebody is operating at a poor power factor load factors load variations maximum demand should have at least a, a little di discrimination between them the cost per unit delivered is high and the next is that it does not cons encourage the use of electricity if i'm using electricity so i need some incentive to be encouraged for that so in the previous video as i told you if i'm a big uh, not in the previous video previously over here talking about it so i told you if i'm a big consumer so my cost when divided by the number of electrical energy units so cost per unit energy comes to be a smaller value if my energy units are very large so the the company should encourage me it should give me incentive the rate for me should be lower no no my energy units are high my 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 bill is very high the second one the second one is a flat rate flat rate tariff flat rate tariff so in this what happens is you are again charged on the basis of the electrical energy units that you have consumed but the rate is different for different class of consumers the rate is different for different class of consumers for example over here if you are a residential consumer so the rate is for instance 10 rupees per unit if you are an industrial consumer so the rate is different it is the same for all industrial consumers but the overall industrial class has a fixed rate for instance 100 the residential all the residential consumers would have a rate of 10 yes yes now over here in a simple rate tariff it was if you are an industrial consumer if you are a residential consumer whatever consumer you are you have the same tariff but over here the rates would be different for different class of consumers the consumers are grouped in different classes okay uh, the different classes of consumers are made taking into account the diversity and load factors the advantage is that it is more fair to different types of consumers whereas the disadvantage is what that separate meters are required for lighting load power load etc why to distinguish between the consumers of course and a particular class of consumer is charged at the same rate irrespective of the energy consumed so basically they are coming to the, the the same thing again and again that we talked about was the cost of electrical energy the fixed cost plus the variable cost divided by the energy unit so if you have the fixed cost divided by energy unit or variable cost or the total cost so if the energy units are high it's the denominator is increasing the cost per unit would decrease so they're talking again and again about the same thing the class is determined by what by the load factor and the by the load factor and the water what is mentioned over here uh, diversity the load factor and the diversity so this is what determines the class of the consumer the next one the third one is the block rate tariff the third one is the block rate tariff so in the block rate tariff what do you have is you have certain blocks of units 
you have certain blocks of units now what do i mean by the blocks of unit is that for instance you are using 100 uh, 100 units of energy in one month so the rates are different you you divide the the units in certain number of blocks divisions are made and the rates are different for that so for instance you're using 100 units so for the first 10 the rate is different for the next succeeding 10 the rate is different well it's not 10 it would be a higher number but for the first it's different for the succeeding it is different so what does the book says is 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 a, when a given block of energy is charged at a specified rate and the succeeding blocks are charged at a progressively reduced rate so this is called block rate tariff so what happens is that first you charge it at a particular rate and then after that block you you charge them on the uh, on a different rate so on a reduced rate so basically let's say you charge the first 200 units on a, on, a, on one rate then the next 100 units are charged at a reduced rate then the next 50 at a further reduced than that if for instance you have the total units are 350 this is called block rate tariff in Pakistan in our country Pakistan this block rate tariff is applicable this block rate tariff is applicable but in the opposite sense not in what it is by definition in Pakistan block rate tariff but this is in the opposite manner and and also this is only for for single phase meters opposite sense what do i mean so i told you in the block rate tariff the first unit has a fixed rate the next one the succeeding block would have a reduced rate but in pakistan the first one has a lesser rate and the more you move further the succeeding units the block succeeding block of units have a higher rate i believe the first 200 is the limit so 200 has got about a rate of today i believe would be 21 to 22 rupees i don't know the exact figure but 200 is the limit i believe yes yes next the fourth is a two-part tariff the fourth is a two-part tariff and this is something you know two-part tariff so here you have uh, what you have uh, a, a, a rate on the maximum demand one cost plus uh, this is the fixed cost and plus running cost which is a function of the number of electrical energy units consumed okay yes so the block rate tariff has got an advantage of what that the more you are using the electrical energy the lesser is the cost for you so the block rate tariff basically encourages you this increases the load factor of the system hence the cost of energy is reduced Majority of residential and commercial consumers are charged with block rate. Now, for two-part tariff, the fixed charges depend on the maximum demand of the consumer, while the running charges depends on the number of units consumed. So, the total charges are what? It's something multiplied kilowatt and this and that. Advantage is easily continued, easily understood by consumers and recovers the fixed charges disadvantages so it has disadvantage for instance you're not using electricity for the whole uh, for the whole month but still you would have to pay your monthly bill for only this part this part would be zero but the fixed charge you will have to pay for that even if you've not used it recovers the fixed part right yes and next disadvantage is that there is always an error in the maximum demand as in our country Pakistan when you are applying for a meter so they ask you for the maximum demand so you have a load of 10 to 15 kilowatts in your home but what do you write over there is a 2 kilowatts yes yes and and they've got uh, people for them over here also you don't do it by yourself they've got people in the market available they sell you to go there and he will do your load calculations he asks you the number of fans the number of acs number of refrigerators you give him a 500 rupees and and they give you 
a, a, a wrong information on the form they put wrong information on the form the load is 15 kilowatts and they mentioned 2 kilowatts how can the system be running properly it's not possible it's not possible for the system to operate properly right yes so there is always an error of the maximum demand so for this we have what for this we have a maximum demand tariff the fifth the fifth is for this we have a maximum demand tariff to overcome this problem and what is this problem is similar to the two part tariff where the only difference is that you measure the actual demand actually the maximum demand actually by using a maximum demand indicator so you use what you use a maximum demand indicator or a maximum demand meter where you where you see the maximum demand actually the actual maximum demand of the consumer is checked through what through this maximum demand indicator so uh, this is an older version book so it states in the disadvantage that the disadvantage is that you will be having using two energy meters for this one would be for the electrical energy units for the proper one and the next you are using the maximum demand indicator as well right yeah so the thing is that nowadays the meters are smart enough you've got the digital meters outside your homes so they have the value of the instantaneous maximum demands as well right yes this is for mostly applied to big consumers not suitable for smaller consumers right yes now the next is what the sixth it's the power factor tariff so although we have not seen the power factor but uh, I would just try to, you know, a little bit talk about it. Power factor tariff states what? So the tariff in which the power factor of the consumer's load is taken into consideration is known as power factor. So uh, basically what happens is that a low power factor increases the rating of the station equipment required. Rating. So rating is basically in the KVAs. I do not want to talk about it over here. Rating are basically the KVAs. So and, and, and you've got your power triangle which is the P is over here, the Q is over here and the S is over here. So S is the KVAs, P is the kilowatts, Q is the KVARs and this phi, so this cause of phi is your power factor. Power factor is cause of phi. P by S, P by S. So which means that power factor is your what is the kilowatts to KVA ratio, right? Similarly, you've got a relation that P is equal to VI cause of phi, right? Yes, now if I write I is equal to P divided by V cause of phi, so which means if my power factor is less, so my equipment would draw more current and more current means what more losses I square R losses yes yes now let's see what does it have what is it talking about where is it a low power factor increases the rating of the station equipment and the line losses so line losses you have understood right if this this is reduced so the Current would increase, current increase means what the line losses would increase. Similarly, if the power factor reduces, have a look, the, this is in inverse proportionality to this, the rating would increase. For now, this should be clear. We'll have a separate detailed discussion on power factor. We'll see that power factor is, for instance, you could say for now is the cause of the angle between the voltage and the current, but this definition is only true for sinusoids right yes so now on coming to power factor tariff so the in power factor tariff we've got uh, we've got categories now so the first one is kva maximum demand tariff kva maximum demand tariff what does this say so uh, in this the maximum demand is the same thing but uh, you have what the maximum demand is in terms of kvas not in terms of the kilowatts that is the only difference right yes now what do you have is the next is you have a, a, a sliding scale tariff sliding scale tariff 
So in a sliding scale tariff, what do you do is that you set a reference value of the power factor. You set a reference value of the power factor and then you, 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 uh, you do the things based on that. Uh, for instance, you, you take the average power, this is also called average power factor tariff, okay. So what you do is you take a reference power factor. Now, if a, a consumer falls below that power factor, so you charge him extra. Whereas if, if, if he's contributing to a good power factor, he's going more towards unity, more towards one. So you, you, you add some incentives to him although not possible in our country like Pakistan but you know you we have a reference value and the reference value is 0.9 in Pakistan the reference value is 0.9 one is the maximum value of power factor and next finally you have is a kilowatt and kvar tariff kilowatt and kvar tariff now what does this say Both active power and reactive power are charged separately. A consumer having low power factor will have will draw more reactive power and hence more charges. So this Q is the reactive power, okay? P is the active power, Q is the reactive power, and S is the apparent power. So if Q is more, if the power factor is less power factor is less q would be more if q is more so of course more charges why because q is charged separately and p which is the actual power is charged separately yes yes sir the next uh, and the final is the seventh that is what that is the three part tariff Three part tariff is what? It's a fixed cost A, you have to pay it. The next is the semi fixed cost, which depends on the maximum demand. And final is the running charges that depends on the number of electrical energy units consumed. The same as we discussed previously. Fixed charge, it includes interest and depreciation on the cost of secondary distribution and labor cost of collecting revenues. B is on maximum demand and C is on the, on the electrical energy. This is generally applied to big consumers. Generally applied to big consumers. And that should be it. That should be it. This is early morning, okay. It's 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.30 I believe right now. I was waking up, so I woke up early, so I, I said, how about waking an early morning video? So it's good enough, the experience is good till now. Anyways, so a very boring topic, you know, very boring topic, I'm sorry for that. But uh, let's say I have one other tariff and that is the eight tariff, that is our application uh, applicable in our Pakistan is the peak uh, hour and off peak tariff peak and off peak tariff so what happens in this is that uh, you have a certain number of peak hours in which you are charged differently at a higher rates whereas in the off peak hours you are charged differently at a lower rates and these hours are specified these hours are specified that in this uh, you when you're using energy from this time to this time this is the rate and when you're using it from this time to this time this is the rate so in the peak hours in the peak hours you are mostly times about 1.8 times the rate is about 1.8 which is almost double that of the off peak so this is in our pakistan which is for what this is for three phase meters okay so in Pakistan, for the single phase meter, you have the block rate tariff in the opposite manner and you have got a peak and off peak tariff for three phase meters. Yes, yes. So I believe I should finish this video over here. In the next video, we'll see some examples and I hope this is clear. This is what this is just the rate of determining the rate of electricity you are supplying to the consumer. The charges that you will have to take from it. Yes, yes. See you in the next video very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.